there, Gavin Gear here for makingwithmetal.com. I just finished wiring my shop for three phase power and I'll have to say it's been quite an adventure. It all started recently when I won an online auction for a metal lathe with a five horsepower, three phase motor. And then I thought to myself, now what? I'm up here in my mountain shop. I don't have three phase power available. And I looked at a bunch of different options and did a bunch of research. The folks over at practicalmachinist.com were very helpful and I found a lot of helpful resources. There's VFDs, there's static phase converters, and there's rotary phase converters. And I decided for my shop, I wanted to have a rotary phase converter because I wanted to be able to add an industrial grinder, add a horizontal milling machine, and not have to do custom wiring. So, I partnered with the folks at American Rotary. I landed on an AI series industrial 20 horsepower phase converter. Like I said, I just got it wired in and it's amazing. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to kick off a content series. Let's talk about power. All of the power fundamentals that you need to know just to have a functional understanding of what solution is gonna be right and if you're so inclined to maybe do some of the wiring and the install or to at least to know, you know what your electrician is gonna be doing and you know, what you're gonna be paying for, that kind of thing. Also, all of the different options, all of the different static phase converters, VFDs, rotary phase converters, what are the pros and cons of each? So we're gonna get into that, and then I'm gonna show you my specific install, and then we'll get to using all of this equipment and stuff. So it's gonna be fun. Make sure you're subscribed because we're gonna cover this end to end and let's get into and let's start with power fundamentals. Let's take this over to the drawing board. Let's talk single phase power. So let's take a look at North American 120 240 volt AC power, which alternates at 60 hertz. This is different around the world. It could be 50 hertz, the voltage could be slightly different, but the principles really are the same. And coming into your house, you have three things. You have two hot legs, and then you have a neutral. And the neutral is essentially a ground with some subtle differences. So we're gonna call this L1, L2. Those are the two hot legs that are gonna be alternating here in the North America between, between about plus 170 and negative 170. That's not 120 volts correct, but it does average out. I'll talk about that uh, in just a second to about 120. So what this voltage looks like if we were to graph it is a sine wave, which would be familiar to you from trigonometry. So I'm just going to draw out a couple complete cycles of this 120 240 AC power uh, with respect to time and with respect to voltage. So time starts at zero. At 1 60th, we have one full cycle, and at another 1 60th, which would be 1 30th total from the start, we have two complete cycles. And we can split these in two here and take a look at what this is gonna look like. So let's start with L1, which hypothetically is gonna start right here at zero, and then there's gonna be a complete cycle in 1 60th of a second. So if we draw this out, it's going to look like this, and then it's going to continue like that. And where we get 120 volts is essentially we're looking at the area under the curve and averaging them out with RMS, root mean squared math, which gives us, you could think of it as an average of 120 volts. So if we're wiring up a 120 volt circuit, what you have is the neutral going to your outlet or your appliance, and then you have one of the hot legs going to the appliance. And that is a potential between L1 and the neutral, which averages out to 120 volts AC. Now for 240, we have these 180 degrees out of phase. In other words, if this is 360, then basically when the voltages are positive and negative on the one side, either negative or positive, they're gonna be the opposite for the other leg. So let's draw this in red. So essentially this is gonna come down like this and it's just gonna kinda of be the opposite. And again, you've got the area under the curve that you're looking at to calculate what kind of power 
you're actually producing. So if we were going to wire a 240 volt single phase appliance like an electric motor in a milling machine, really the two legs that you're gonna care about are the L1 and the L2, and those are gonna go to your receptacle and or directly to the appliance. And it's gonna be reading the potential between L1 and L2. And if you look up here, that's RMS, 120 on each side, that's 240, 240, 240, 240, as it alternates. So if you understand that the neutral is like ground but is slightly different and does not have potential, L1 alternates plus 170, negative 170. L2 is the opposite. The RMS power averages out to 240 volts for 240 single phase or half of that, 120, if we're just going to the neutral. This will kind of let you understand what you need to know about power for single phase in a shop. Let's go over the electrical panel and I'll show you what that actually looks like. And this is where things get practical. Here's the 100 amp sub panel for the Ultimate Reloader Studio. This is pretty much what a main panel is gonna look like, uh, except instead of these feeder wires here coming from a breaker on my main panel, they would be coming in from the street. So here's L1, L2, and neutral that we had on our diagram. And L1 and L2 are 180 degrees out of phase, like I drew on the sine wave diagram and the neutral is like a ground. The neutral bar here goes down both sides and we tie our ground wires and our neutral wires together. Now what's interesting about how these electrical panels are laid out is that as you go down on either side, you're gonna be alternating between the takeoff point for L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, and so on and so forth. And what that means is that if you have 120 volt breakers, which are these thin ones, one is gonna be off of L1, one's gonna be off of L2, and they'll be out of phase with respect to each other. And that's because when you put a 240 volt breaker on here, like the 70 amp one that drives the rotary phase converter, you have an L1 and an L2. And as we know, at the extremes, the difference between these two is 240 volts. So that's how we always ensure that a double pole breaker, which is these fat ones, gets two different legs and a single pole breaker, which is the narrow type here, has L1 or L2, and it doesn't matter because they're just shifted by 180 degrees or by 1 one twentieth of a second. So this is how electrical power is laid out for single phase, and it all maps back to the diagram that we drew. But things get a little bit more interesting when we talk about three phase power. So let's go back to the drawing board. So for three phase power, we actually have an extra conductor coming into our panel. Let's take a look at these. So we still have L1, which is hot leg number one. We have L2, which is hot leg number two. And then we have an L3, which is hot number three. We still have a neutral. In some cases, it's not used on older equipment specifically, like my older metal lathe, but it's still gonna be there in the panel. So the difference here is these sine waves that represent the voltages on each of these legs are separated by 120 degrees because there's three of them and they're split into even thirds in terms of where they're at in 360 degrees trigonometric cycles for the sine waves. And the potentials are measured against two of these together, L2 to L1, L1 to L3, and L3 to L2, for instance. Let's take a look at what our sine waves are gonna look like for three phase power. And there's gonna be a plus extreme and a minus extreme. These voltages vary, but the frequency here in the United States is typically gonna be 60 Hertz. So this is 1 60th, and then here we have another 1 60th for 1 30th from the start. And as I mentioned, these are separated into thirds, 120, 240, 360. And again, starting here, 120, 240, 360. So let's start with L1. L1 is gonna start at zero in this particular diagram, and we're gonna have a complete cycle here 
by the time we get to 1 60th of a second. So it's going to look something like this. And it's going to continue going and be at zero again here at 1 30th of a second yet again. Okay, now for L2, let's draw this one in red. We're going to start at 120 and we're going to stop here, 120 past the first 160th cycle that the first leg starts at. So we're going to look something like this and we're going to continue again. And we can actually continue this back this way. Now for L3, we're going to use green for L3. We're going to start at this 120, 240, 360. So it's at 240 and we're going to complete a cycle after 120 degrees after L2. And again, we can kind of draw this back that way. So right away you can see something that's really different here. In single phase power, uh, every 180 degrees we go to zero. And that with electric motors can create an effect called torque ripple. The torque on the electric motor is alternating between full torque when there's 240 volts and zero when the two sine waves intersect at zero. Torque ripple can actually cause surface finish quality problems on a device like a metal lathe. And with three phase power, you can see here that the, the overall power, the voltage difference here is never zero. There's enough overlap here between the three different legs that there's always torque applied to the motor and the torque is much more even because of that. And with three conductors coming in, you have 50% more power available for the same size conductor as well. So three phase power is very desirable and it's what's used in industrial environments. And now with older equipment being auctioned off, having three phase power available is a great way to take advantage of that equipment. So this is what three phase power looks like theoretically. Let's walk over to the panel and take a look at what that looks like in terms of an electrical install. So this is the load center for the AI series 20 horsepower American rotary phase converter that I just installed, but it's gonna be very similar to a typical main panel for three phase power as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on. Now we have live power. This is L1, L2, and L3, the three primary legs of the power with the AC alternating current. And then we have, we can run a neutral in here. I have grounding that's going on between the phase converter and this panel and my main panel. I don't have 120 volt appliances I'm gonna run off of this or any kind of sensitive electronics. And like I indicated, my lathe is not grounded. So what happens is L1, L2, and L3 come straight through the breaker attached to the wiring for L1, L2, and L3. That goes directly to the lathe switching contacts and to ultimately the motor. So this is a smaller panel. It's got four spaces. Each of the three phase breakers has three poles and has three contacts that it picks up power from, from L1, L2, and L3. So similar to a single phase panel, but we've got three hot legs instead of two. And like we talked about, these are 120 degrees apart. That's it. So there we go, the mysteries of three-phase power solved. Well, actually, in reality, there's a heck of a lot more to know, but I do hope that this basic primer in single-phase versus three-phase power gives you a basic understanding, enough to know what's gonna be necessary to get the right three-phase power wired up to your equipment. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget, we got a lot more content coming up in this three-phase power fundamentals series, including the different types of power conversion hardware, including rotary phase converter fundamentals, including my AI20 American Rotary Industrial Rotary Phase Converter install process, wiring up equipment, fine tuning, etc. So make sure you're subscribed to Gavin Tube. And until next time, happy metalworking. <laughs>